Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is January 22nd and we have some new news in the continuing saga, if you will, of the bamboo controversy. So, late last night at 7.22, The Verge, which is a tech website, they posted an article written by Sean Hollister, who's a senior editor over there who covers gadgets, and they contacted Bamboo Labs and they asked them some very pointed questions to address all of the concerns that the community has over this recent firmware update announcement. So let me switch over so I can show you what I'm reading and we'll cover through some of this. And I'd love to hear what you think about Bamboo's response to this situation. Here we have the article. I'm not gonna go into all the beginning stuff because that's what I already covered in my last video with the firmware. But uh, like I said before, they wanted to set the record straight. So um, I won't read through this all, but I will post a link to this article so that you can take a look at it yourself. But let's get into the questions. These were sent to Bamboo and it says, got answers via a spokesperson, Nadia Yakubi. One, will Bamboo publicly commit to never requiring a subscription in order to control its printers and print from the home over a network? And the response was, for our current product line, yes, we will never require a subscription to control or print from printers over home network. However, there might be specific business scenarios in the future that require exceptions, i.e. 3DP vending machine, but these would apply to entirely different applications or customer needs. Let's see. Will Bamboo pub publicly commit to never putting any existing printer functionality behind a subscription? The answer, yes. Will Bamboo publicly commit to never restricting the use of third-party filament in any way, shape, or form? The answer, for our current product line, yes. We have pl no plans to restrict the use of third-party filament in any way. Number three, will Bamboo publicly commit to never monitor files and prints transmitted between users and their printers over a home network? And the response says, let's be clear about how this works. LAN mode, nothing is transmitted through our servers. Cloud mode, users control their privacy through incognito printing. When enabled, no print history is recorded and files are not stored in the cloud. Cloud features, for features like reprinting, files are temporarily stored in the cloud to allow users to access their print history. Under no circumstances do we look into the print file model without the explicit consent of our customers. Bamboo has additionally agreed to add a new developer mode. Some users are concerned that this move is just temporary and that Bamboo can simply remove the developer mode and claim that it was too much of a security risk or say that not enough users opted to use it to justify keeping it around. Next question. Four, will Bamboo publicly commit to permanently keep the developer mode with local MQTT live stream and FTP and never remove it in any future update or shipping batch of the X1, the P1, the A1, and the A1 Mini? The response, yes. However, if a severe a security issue arises in the future, we may need to make adjustments to address it. Users can always choose whether to update their printer firmware or not. Next question, number five. Will Bamboo publicly commit to offering and keeping the local developer mode available in any future printers it releases? The answer, we cannot commit to features for non-existent future printers. However, we will clearly communicate all relevant details before customers make their purchase decisions. Question six, will Bamboo publicly commit to its current and future printers permanently be, being remotely controllable over land without user accounts for internet or internet access? And their response, for current models, yes. For future products, while we aim to retain this functionality, we believe committing to a specific technical approach indefinitely is not responsible. Uh, let's see, Bamboo has announced that Bamboo Connect will integrate with third-party slicers like Orca, but some users are confused why an app like Bamboo Connect is required at all when you could instead add more secure authentication to the printer itself with industry standard practices like having the printer generate a secure token slash API key instead of creating a proprietary middleman auth authentication app. And the follow-on question to that is, did, did Bamboo consider and reject interoperable ways of securing its printer like tokens? The answer, yes. 7B, will Bamboo commit 
to changing its authentication system to an interoperable one. If Bamboo did reject interoperable secure authentication systems, why? Now let's see, the, their responsive software communicates and interacts with our cloud system. It is reasonable for us to have a say in how it operates. As highlighted in our blog post, unauthorized third-party software created or has created ongoing challenges to this ability of our cloud services and machines for a long time. Question number eight, is it true that the developer of Orca Slicer was not actually working with Bamboo on the integration and that Bamboo announced their involvement without approval? Their response, we have been in ongoing discussions with Sopfever, the developer of Orca Slicer since January 14th regarding the firmware update and potential integration to the new release. Work with, in quotes, might be ambiguous. To be more specific, messages were exchanged, files were sent, and their receipt was confirmed along with an indication that they would be reviewed. Question number nine, the one that I actually care about most probably, will Panda Touch and similar accessories continue to work under develop mo developer mode? Their answer, we guarantee keeping the port channel open, but implementations are up to third-party developers. 9B is Bamboo answering that company's questions. Their response, since the release, we have received many inquiries from third-party software developers, including Big Tree Tech, via dev partners at bamboolab.com. We are currently in the process of finalizing our response. It is worth noting that we warned third-party developers in a blog post from March 2024, quote, if you're developing a device that controls the entire printer, including the heating elements and motion system, please do not expect long-term support unless it has been approved by us in advance. This is especially applicable to for-profit organizations. And final question here, question number 10, will you allow users to roll back the old firmware for reasons if they for reasons like if they accidentally upgrade without understanding the limitations. Their response, yes. Firmware rollback was and always will be available. And I'm sorry, and there's a follow-on question there. Wasn't the last one. I have trouble reading sometimes. Number 11, does the private key leaking change any of your plans? And their response, no, this doesn't change our plans and we've taken immediate action. So you've seen what Bamboo has to say and one, I appreciate that they responded to these very pointed questions. I think this covers a lot of what the 3D printing community has raised as far as concerns go. And what I want to know is what you think. Like the title of the video, is this too little too late? They've already lost too much of your trust and you are done with this company? Or is this a, hey, we're all good. I told you so. Nothing to worry about. The sky was never falling. Nothing, nothing has changed in your view and you're going to continue to happily use your bamboo printers. Um, for me personally, I think, as I said before, it's probably not going to impact me even if they hadn't created the developer mode with the exception of the Panda Touch. I have mentioned how much I do use the Panda Touch. So, but if the Panda Touch stopped working, my P1S is still gonna work. I don't use Orca Slicer that much, so I primarily rely on Bamboo Studio, but I absolutely understand the position of anybody who has that concern of a company making changes after the sale and restricting what we can do with the equipment that we bought. There are already a lot of 3D manufacturers and out there that, like I believe Hagears, you, you have to use their solution for their 3D printing. And they put a lot of time, money, and effort into making sure that you get the best possible print and they can't do that when, if you just throw in some budget resin into their machine, they don't have any control over that, too much stuff out there to test. So they say, hey, you're locked into our ecosystem, but we're gonna make sure that you have the most pain-free and pleasant performance and we kind of guarantee that. So I can understand a company wanting to do that, but you go in to that ecosystem knowing the restrictions. So to have things change mid course, get the rug pulled out from under you per se, I understand why that wouldn't be a good thing. Now, they're, they obviously they're not gonna make promises to printers that aren't released yet, but what if 
the H2D or whatever their next flagship printer is called. Let's say that's a $2,000 printer and they say, hey, we are aiming this toward more professional prosumer or professional printers and we wanna make sure that you have the best experience with this machine. So we are gonna limit that machine to only using our filaments or you're gonna to have to have a subscription. I mean, they're, I think they've left, their, left themselves enough room to kind of do that without backtracking. Not saying they're gonna do that, but what would that mean to you? Would you buy that next printer if it's said, well, you're gonna to have to have a subscription or you're only going to be able to use our filament. Um, or I think there's other printer manufacturers that say you can use other people's filament, but you're gonna to have to have a, a developer account that's gonna cost you so much money a month for us to allow you to use the printer in that way. Would you be okay with that? So please take a moment, drop your comments below and let me know what you think again. Too little, too late, or we're all good. And how would you, would any kind of a subscription or fees after the sale, would that deter you from buying Bamboo Labs next printer? So share your thoughts with me. As always, I appreciate the time that we get to spend together here on the channel. I haven't completely changed sets or anything. It's just that with these timely uh, videos, it's easier for me to do these at my computer. You'll still see the old background and the printers and all that in future videos, but for things like this, it's just easier. Anyway, please take a moment, hit that like button, hit the little notification bell, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's just keep on learning, burning, and printing together. Take care, everyone.